we have Denial versus Splice, and Denial, oh, Chance, that's going to be tough. Okay, so we talked about Heretics earlier, right. and we kind of said they had the entire year last year of placing top 24, top 20, yada, 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 and then this year they exploded. This is the first time for four of the players on Denial that they've been in the Pro League, and they've been here for less than two weeks. I didn't have high expectations for them coming in. I just want them to look decent, and they've had at least some fairly close maps, some fairly close series, so I expect them to be down towards the bottom, but I want to see how good they can get because this is the best practice they have had in their entire careers, the best level of competition. So I'm expecting the first two weeks for them to get smoked, but I care about Fort Worth. I care about the cross-divisional play. So obviously, you're on five. You want to get some confidence builders, and unfortunately, you have to deal with Splice, not expecting it to go well. But if you keep playing competitive, if you start having some great performances like Risk, I think has been pretty phenomenal for the team. I think going forward, you can start to have higher expectations for them. Wait, but so Pac, I got to ask because Chance is saying give it to Fort Worth, give them some time. But yesterday, the desk was fairly, fairly harsh on that entire roster. I mean, I, I think you just give them the rest of this week, see what they can do. They're going to go to Fort Worth. What do you expect them to do? They're not They're not just going to turn it around. Every you don't day. expect many changes. No. no. Well, the no. Thing, like, I don't even know. Are they going to stay in, like, America to scrim they some should. of the best teams in the we world? Like, I, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what level of competition they were scrimming at coming into the Pro League. I, I don't know what they have to deal with. And talk about roster changes. How many other French players can we name that aren't on this team? Like, two or three or something like that? So I don't know how many great options in terms of roster moves this team really has. And, yes, it's not a good spot for them to be in, but it's super early on. And again, maybe they come out, end up one and six right. in the same spot as EG. Like if you're running an organization, how long do you give that team? I, me personally, yeah, it's your I would give them well past Fort Worth. I would give them the entire Pro League. Because again, it, again, I look at it the same way I look at Heretics. Is you take a team that they look okay but never great, but now you give them a, a year to improve. I just want to give the Nile time. I want to see how high. Wait, I want to know. If you're running a business, you give a team that can't win a match a whole year. I have no idea. Yeah, I personally would if I was in a position. Daddy, to do would so. you? <laughs> Absolutely not! <laughs> Absolutely not. There's no way I'm gonna go through an entire year of just straight getting smoked. I mean, that's what, not you, gonna I would pick up Optic. I would take their roster and run that. No, team. but like, you gotta understand. You can say hypotheticals. Who knows what sort of situation Denial is in financially? Like, we don't know well, any yeah. of this. All we know is this is a team that does not look good, that we did not expect to look good, that we want to see improve. That's the only thing I care about. I mean, they haven't won a single game. That's. I mean, you we can't we deny have that. seen way worse yeah, in the have. Pro League. We have seen much worse than them yeah, from the bottom of the barrel. Those guys should have been dropped as well. Right. They should have, but they're better than the teams like the Epsilon we saw last year. They're winning more maps. And they've shown more like life to give them reasons. Like Whalers has been underperforming for how good he was last year, and you have guys like Risk that are still disgustingly good. But they're and maybe all, for their team that they're on. They all have a under a 1.0 KD. No one is. Just, I, I would no hope they do. Good. You were just saying Robbie B should have under a one because they're losing. This is a team that's losing. They all have under a one. No, no, no. So that no, means no, their team no, is on the what same page. Right? Was, like if you lose a hard point by 200 points. There's no way that you should be positive and the rest of your teammates are negative. You're doing something completely wrong. He's not that nasty, right? So he's not just running around world starting people. Right, but I'm saying a team that's 0-5, you expect them to have bad KDs. I mean, like, it's not like a shocking thing, yeah, but they're okay. not bad enough that you're saying, ah, screw the team, get rid of them. That, I'm not nearly at that point yet. If they go to cross-divisional play and still keep getting smoked, then fine. Make whatever changes you can, then good luck finding more French people. Like, I just, it, it's a tough spot. Yeah, it certainly is a tough spot, but we can't just talk about Denial. We also need to very much so talk about Splice. Handed their first loss yesterday by Heretics Study, but still extremely strong, especially going up against Denial. Yeah, yesterday versus Heretics, like I said, it just had a couple players that were just inconsistent. You know, obviously the communication was lacking them a little bit. Ended up pushing it all the way to game four, but it just lost it. The control, I was watching a couple plays where you remember when Metals just slid and they thought they were going to get the cap on B and bottom on side on C side. Thought they were going to get it, and then they just immediately immediately decided to hit it with like a tick left and just were able to hold them the entire time after that. I just felt like Splice, they're going to be okay, especially in this series. This is going to be like a bounce back series for a couple players that had a very inconsistent game yesterday. They're just going to boost stats versus these guys, if you ask me. For me, Heretics just played really well yesterday. Yeah. That was one loss in the Pro League, and this is like this is also a really bad match for Denial to get them right after a loss because they're going to come in they're coming with the fire. Yeah, they're going to come in with the fire. And then something I want to see, though, is not only for them to bring the fire, but I want to see them play all of their worst maps. 
I don't want to see him high C and S and D. Play your worst maps because it's it's like the best tune-up game you're gonna have in the pro league. Like, yeah, you want the $500 to win, but you need your map pool to be as deep as possible going into Fort Worth. So if I see Splice in our common maps, I'm just annoyed. Like, I, I don't care whether or not Splice win the series. I want them to get so, better so, so they don't so end up getting want, beat by Heritage. So you want them to on. play bad maps against a team that you expect the organization to keep. So you just want. To play. <laughs> well, there's no saying? mistakes that Denial Zone 5. It's obviously one of the best teams in the world going against the team at the bottom of the Pro League. There's no mistakes about that. I want Denial to improve. I want Splice to... I, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't mind Splice losing maps to Denial, even if Denial's at the bottom, because Splice needs to deepen their map pool going into Fort yeah. Worth. Those are two completely separate things. Yeah, that is. I respect that. You know, just building a more variety of I, I understand. I understand the point, but the point is he, he wants them to do it against this team for a reason. He didn't say that yesterday. He wouldn't say that yesterday. He won't say that tomorrow. Yeah, There's no qualms about Denial being at the bottom that they don't look good. <laughs> That's not the issue. The issue is we've had teams that don't look great that improve. We literally saw that with Heretics. They just need time. They have been here for less than two weeks in the Pro League. They just need more time. Or maybe they don't. Maybe oh, three months from now we're like, oh, it didn't work out. Heretics as opposed to Black Ops 4 Heretics. Yeah, because that's how they have Call of Duty works. You have a different game every year. What kind of evaluations do you want me to Black make? Ops 4. What are you talking <laughs> about? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is enough arguing for this death segment because we do need to move on here again. Enigma 6, 3 one Accelerate, taking them down as we head toward the end of Division B Week 2. But coming up, we have Denial versus Splice. Up the game. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Game number two have managed to drag Chance off the analyst desk. He was getting a little bit rowdy up there with Study and Pack. However, Splice versus Denial. You've already had a little bit to talk about on the desk, but Chance, this series, you were talking maps, you were talking deepening the map pool for the likes of Splice. What are you thinking about the series? Uh, well, I, I think Splice is going to win on, on pretty much any map you put them on, right? Like, Spice is a good enough team that any map in the game, at the very least, they're going to be good on, even the maps that they don't play. And at their best, they're going to be phenomenal. So in a series where you're playing a, t uh, a team that's at the bottom of the division, try to tune it up. And there you go. Arsenal, they're not playing any Hacienda s and I think Payload has been their permaban, if I remember correctly. So they're doing exactly that, and that's what I wanted to see from them. Do we get a happy chance? Is, hap is Chance happy now, seeing these maps? Have you... Oh, no, I'm not happy. Happy is way too strong a word. <laughs> I'm appreciative of Splice putting in the thought. Okay, no, I completely agree with you. You know, it, Splice, before yesterday, they were going up against Heretics. We thought that they could be coming into this game undefeated. Yesterday, it, it was a, a big loss for these guys. Heretics now are at that number one spot. I think Splice, yes, they have a little bit of a point to prove to come out and win, but I think we all expect that. We all think that this could be a 3-0. We might not even see the fourth and fifth map, but for Denial... Again, this is another another round of five other players sat in front of them, another chance to get some experience going into the likes of Fort Worth. These guys need to be able to try and find something of this series. Even if it's a loss, they need to find something. I mean, just, you know, get any sort of confidence. And then, again, if they can win their series tomorrow, you get the monkey off their back or win the series tomorrow. And then you're feeling not great going into Fort Worth, but at least you know you got extra time. You can go back and watch all this VOD. Like, there are so many more tools accessible to this team now that they have pretty much never had in the past. You're not playing the best competition, not able to rewatch your own gameplay against teams that are going to expose your mistakes. So... It's kind of like, what, like Mind Freak from last year? Yeah. I, I don't know if you remember this from World War II. It's like they started out in the Pro League and they were abysmal at hardpoint, at whatever their record was. But then we talked about it, need to make improvements. And then it was like the next week they came out, they ended up going like 5-1 and one at hardpoint. And that's the type of thing that I think everyone can appreciate seeing, it is if a team is an underdog or not doing well, you at least want to see some sort of improvements. This is another chance here for them to at least get some experience and maybe, just maybe, cause a shock. I think the, the thing that you pointed out was about their, you know, the ability to go back and watch everything here. However, they've got two full weeks after today uh, of core gameplay to go back and watch pretty much every map and mode combination, see where the strengths are, see where the flaws are, and I'd like to think that they can, uh, they can utilize what they have in front of them. Splice, on the other hand, uh, again, uh, a team which a lot of people will be going into Dallas-Fort Worth to, uh, you know, fight for the spot, that number one spot. Everyone's looking at your Optic Gaming, you know. Splice was a team that came into this, you know, top four. You know, straight away they were in the Pro League and they'll be looking to take the title. However, Denial is the team in front of them. There's one game, one round, one map at a time. Looks oh. like Accuracy's found himself a triple. Great kills. Uh, fantastic kills, uh, but we're going to hit a hard reset on this one. And we're going to get right back into it. Thoughts on yesterday, Splice and Heretics. What do you take away from that series, Chance? Vamos. I, like, <laughs> it's the easiest thing to say, Vamos. But I, I learned a lot more about Heretics from that series than I did Splice. Okay. Like, yeah, Splice loses. But, some, like, you know, matches don't go your way. You can get beat. You lose by 15 on hard point. You, say, you tip your hat to the other team and say, great job. But that means for Heretics, they can beat the best teams in the game. It, it's one thing to come out 4-0, like you're looking great, but do you fizzle out? Well, you got even tougher competition in front of you. You rise to the occasion. You get those 250 to 235 wins they had in the hard point. And that means going to Fort Worth like they're capable. They're an incredibly passionate team that I don't see slowing down anytime soon. No, absolutely not. I mean, Heretics, uh, especially with a huge fan base back home, it seems like they have the support. It seems like they're, they're riding that wave. And I, I think you kind of touched it then, you know, they could have you know crashed and burned and just gone out with a hot 3-0 against Splice and lost every single map by a lot. But they didn't. They rose to that occasion. You know, they, they came in. They, they won that first hard point. I believe it might have been on Hacienda, actually. And uh, it was a close one, by all means. But that energy that's flowing through them, it is like no other. Denial, though, they could uh, use a little bit of that energy right now. And something that's interesting about that as well is there's obviously no crowd here, right? So yeah. there's one thing of like, yes, you are playing the best competition in the world. But is it easier on the nerves when you're not doing in front of a couple thousand people directly in front of you with the rise of the crowd? Of course, for the side of Heretics, they might have enough fans that it might actually help them. Like, <laughs> who really knows what, what kind of vibe it gets? But 
they are two different scenarios completely. We've seen teams that are amazing in Columbus, Ohio, and we've seen teams that are terrible in Columbus, Ohio. You can be either way. So it's great that Heretics is doing well now. We obviously want to see them continue that uh, into the open events. Well, it looks like we're underway in map number one. It's going to be hard points. It's going to be Hastia and the Splice versus Denial. Yes, we have a favorite here. And of course, it will be that North American team, of course, with a little bit of Irish in there. Being jeered up against the French here, Denial, who are going to fall at the start. First couple of points will go towards Splice as we do see Temp. Got a bit of a battle with Breezy. Aqua does go down. Yeah, Aqua with the, the ICR. Not much you can do in that spot. You're just hoping for the best, but looks like Denial trying to storm back in, pick up a couple kills, make it pick up all the kills. Now it's just Accuracy, who's only able to take one life down with them. So Denial right back inside, and they are currently on the correct side of the map. You got Risk pushed up Rock, which well, he's going to have at least one player to deal with in the future. But inside the hill, nothing but Denial players hanging out, and they should be good for this rotation. So should have a, a nice little lead there crew for themselves. We certainly can. Nine seconds still going. Looney will slide around with his teammates, though, and take control of the rock. Whalers can slide on in, but the ICR up close, not going to prevail here as Temp will take him down and now heading over to the garage. We are going to see Denial on that favorable side. They're going to have those spawns as well. What can Splice do to break on in? Jird's going to be shut down straight away by Risk. Whalers takes down Looney. ICR better than the Maddox in those types of gunfights. And inside the hill, Denial for the moment still holding on Temp. Able to take down one and a half with them and has the help from the team. The reinforcements are in and, well, just like that, Spice coming from the front side. And I think one thing to note, Spice is probably one of the better, if not the best team in the game, at holding this hill from the front. They don't always try to force the back spawns in. They'll be happy. Just get that Lambo control. Get a couple players staring at the door. And you'll be good to go, but Denial, they're taking one more crack at the hill, so Aqua has to wrap back, but comes down to the 1v1, which Whalers is able to drop one. And this should at least slow Denial down enough to get a few seconds off the clock, but still holding on to that lead. Trying to win the rotation. Splice trying to bounce back. Well, currently a 10-point lead here for Denial as we rotate down to the fences. Splice, they have right the favorable sports. No score streaks available. No specialists at this given time. And this is maybe where they can take the lead back and start to gain a lead of their own accuracy. Falls after taking down Brezzi. Now sliding on round, it looks like Splice have read the flank here. 49 plays 49 as Whalers and Natcha deal the damage. Two do fall. And a potential retake here coming in from Denial. And this is really well executed. You had all five players on the map moving in at the exact same time. You had the bait and switch that turned out to not be necessary inside of 10. And you're right back in this hill, at least contesting. But now you got to win the gunfights because Aqua is able to pick up two. That does force Denial a little bit farther back. And with 23 seconds left, this is the final set. And Risk is only able to take down one. The ICR is causing damage. And it's honestly still tough. It's coming down to just the final few kills. It looks like finally Denial is able to stabilize and get this final bit of scrap time. But that's what you'd love to see. You got Whaler stepping up, trying to build towards some score streaks. You had a great team push over towards the hill. Scrap time goes their way, and they're going to have about a 20-point lead going into noon. Splice, long way to go just yet, but Denial most certainly in this game. They're not getting ran over. We saw E6 versus Accelerate, and those hard points were brutal here. Denial, though, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. With Splice as it goes, as now, Temp will find a double. And starting a little streak of his own, him and Looney both on two kill streaks, maybe. Looking to find the first, and on the flank, it's going to be Temp just find one, should be taken down, will be. 35 seconds left on this final half point. Splice take the lead, it's a narrow one at that, but the amount of players flooding on him, in here, the contest will go forward. Kill feed lights of Grey, and Denial will take over. Again, nice bounce back inside. Great team push, hitting from all angles. The bait and switches are on point. Splice, though, want to take maybe just one more crack at it, trying to break through on Rock, try to, well, take away as much time from the opponent as you can. But that kill feed, nothing but white denial. Looking good in the kills department. The score maybe not as high up as they would want it to be, considering how heavily Brezzi and Whalers are, well, outslaying the opposition. But a lead they have nonetheless. And they're starting to earn some streaks as well. Another kill feed, nothing but wide on the left side. Denial, they're looking great right now. I'll tell you what, this is an interesting first rotation. 50 seconds still left in the middle. Uh, and I like this from Brezzi. He was just kind of locking down the outskirts and his team are going to go down. So he's going to rotate on in. Aqua's going to find him though. Jurd will finalize that kill. And Denial 
they're going to be pushed back here. But on that first rotation, they had those good spawns towards Garage. They're looking to keep these number nine and eight. That's going to be Whalers and Zeke to spawn out. Splice looks like they've learned from that. And again, it's Looney pushing through, trying to be a nuisance here. Well, he's trying to be a nuisance, but then he got Brezzi actually taking down the player inside the hill. So Splice, yes, they are putting quite a bit more attention on locking down the back spawns for the Lambo Hill. But they're not getting a ton of this middle hill time. Finally, someone's able to get inside. And well, you got denial players essentially everywhere on the map. He's trying to win the 1v1 on Jur. Jur just being annoying, staying alive. Doesn't even need to get the beat down. Does it with the SOG. And the rotation is in. The question for Spice, can they run up the score? This is probably the, the best position they've put themselves in to get a ton of time. And they're even going to invest the Tempest potentially to get some streaks to make it happen. Well, that's a war machine getting fired in there. There's no flag jack for Aqua, and he's going to have to just back off a little bit. It's lucky that War Machine hasn't come in at him, but there's going to be a cluster as well to add to the mix. It's Risk who does that back and forth with Looney, Zeke, and Risk all finding kills. Tempest isn't going to find anything here, and the ICR of Accuracy will be shut down. Denial breakthrough, denial break in, and the Grav Slam. That ain't finding anything either. Players are too far. Laying down again. They knew the specials were going to come out on this hill. And, well, Temp is going to give us even more. Well adjusted. Attack 5 has even been called in. And, well, Spice, they are fighting tooth and nail to try to get this final bit of time. It looks like they're successful. Whoa. But that took a ton to make it happen. Aqua just went down as well. Number 7 still going at it. Risk is fighting for the final 10 here. And I'll tell you what, what type of denial are we looking at right now? They have the rotation. Just the only one over there at this given time. And what a game we have. And, and how good is that from denial, right? You burn a couple of the specialists on the flip side of Spice. That was Spice's best opportunity they've had in this game to really run up the score and they handle it very well. They win their rotation. They're dealing with the players, of course. They have three players right now trying to worry about connector in the flank. No one for Splice approaching from that angle. But still, this time, going the way of Denial, winning the gunfights. Nache trying to make something happen with the Tempest, but it does help if you're alive. Tempest still alive to kick in. That coming from Nache. You see the little electric bolt doesn't manage to find him this time. But one jumping in, Shirt's going to shut him down. So both Tempest nullified with absolutely no impact on the game here. 121 to 156 here as we still go strong. Risk, weightless and accuracy all putting names on the board as well. Long range sword. That is ambitious to say the least as accuracy deals with that one. But all this time that's been going on, yes, it's been contested a little bit, but Denial have been the one in the half point, in and amongst those fences. We're going to see if they can continue it. Uh, again, it seems like Splice, they are winning at least half, maybe more than half of these early rotations, but haven't done a fantastic job of holding on. Frankly, on Rock, I don't even know how easy it's going to be, but a couple of the opening gunfights go their way. Whalers, though, is able to take down two with him. Well, Looney feels the pressure, wants to use Attack 5 to help out with what he can, has Temp to help him out. So far, so good. Denial has not put a foot inside. This is just a lot of time going their way. The best hold that Splice has had so far. We're going to see if they can continue it, chipping away at this lead. And this one should have potentially could go right down to the wire. We saw Splice versus Heretics on this very map yesterday, and I think it was an eight-point difference in the end here. Heretics took it. Denial have a, a very strong core right now with that 20-point lead, but Splice bouncing back into this one, having control of the rock. You see, again, point after point going their way. Trying to level things out with 15 seconds. The Vision Pulse is popped. That's going to be a team kill. And they're using the Vision Pulse just to get Temp streaks. Because obviously 18 seconds, how big of a deal is that? But it is huge. If Temp can earn some more, essentially just needs one kill to make it happen. And it is Risk that shuts him down. So unfortunate that he doesn't get the streaks. But the great news is that you were down by 50 points. Now you're essentially at a tied game. Of course, on the flip side, though, didn't even notice it. Whalers, what seems like the eighth time in this game that he got close to streaks, is finally able to get the last. Lightning, finally able to get that Hellstorm. But of course, Splice able to retake the lead for the first time in three, four minutes. Yeah, and I mean, again, it's how impactful can Whalers be with these streaks. He's 22 and 15. He's got a Lightning and Hellstorm to play with. These next couple of half points, they're very open. You can take advantage of that. However, Splice warming up, looking to shut this one down. 30 seconds left on the half point here, but you're thinking about the next rotation. You're thinking about this garage. And Splice, they do have that side of the map. I think you might have to use at least one here just to try to break on through because you have no specialist to help you out. But you do have 15 seconds to play with. Maybe if you want to see if you can pick up a couple kills before you try to burn one of these streaks. But no, he's going to invest the Hellstorm right away. Spot out information. Got players up by Rock, which he's going to take down Looney. But Looney was in a gunfight anyway. But now you have players going around the back. Rezzy at least is causing confusion for Denial to come in the front. Denial also gets the spawns. That's a Hellstorm burn to get in the hill. And they should be able to retake the lead. Yeah, and we've got... Uh, a concussion available. We've got uh, a 
close to just use by risk as well. Isn't going to find anything just yet. Wayless has the lightning strike, and how impactful that can be on the fences. We is stuck at 199 apiece. Denial take the lead here. And my goodness, this is a one to watch back for sure. 35 seconds still left on the hard point. No team is going to win it here. It will be going to fencing. But I will say, this is where you can start to gain a lead. Splice are in there. Do, do, I mean, did Denial go for the break here? Surely they have. Uh, I mean, if you're all spawning in the back, like you're right there to make it happen. Oh. But now you're getting tempested accuracy is cleaning up kills left and right. And while well, you spawn right back in the exact same place, and now you have to make a trek. What was so good with the Hellstorms and all that, Splice, sometimes they just flip that switch, get on through. And now it's going to be very close. Splice, what? 10 points away from winning the game. Denial's going to have to be damn near perfect over on fences. Well, Lightning Strike is available to you. Denies two with the double there. Contestion comes in. Looney finds one. Accuracy dips, dives, and finds himself with one. But it's only going to be the punch from Jerd to follow up the kill. Denial, yes, they've just flipped that on his head. Lightning Strike is going to come in. Denial needs to break through right now. Five points still left to go. Everyone's going to jump off, but everyone's just going to jump back on here as Aqua will be contesting with Breezy. Breezy goes down. Lightning and Hellstorm available for Aqua as well. And he's going to invest this straight away. Should clear it out. Find the kills. Doesn't want to team kill any of his players. And selflessly will slow things down. Splice come out on top. And Denial. So good. Such a strong performance, but just not enough. It was a good game, right? I, I mean, think probably the biggest moments is on the Rock Hill when Spice was down by 50 points. Yeah. They make the perfect hold. I, I think they have to use like the Vision Pulse. Temp has to go off on like a five spree to make it happen. But Spice, a little bit of slow start, flip the switch, start going crazy over towards Lamborghini Hill as well. Fantastic job by them. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, let's just have a quick look back. This is the moment on Garage where it's, you know, a 15 point lead here for Spice. That's got to be uh, a killer again. The, the Tempest chain that comes through on Risk and Breezy. They spawn at the very back still, and this rotation that goes on, I almost feel it, it's kind of pretty tough because they're the ones with the lightning strike, but they have control. So, you know, it'd be great to break with this, but when you have it, I mean, where, what do you do with it? They try their best, but simply get blown out of the end. I mean, this is one of those things we're talking about, you know, denial making improvements where they can now go back and rewatch this game and be like, okay, guys, we used the Hellstorm to break through on the Lamborghini Hill. How did we drop that? How did players end up breaking through? Because that's kind of where the game spiraled out of control. But sometimes these things just happen. But denial, at the very least, I think you can take away. It was still a solid game. Well, before the game, I believe Jess had a chat with Accuracy. What did he uh, have to say, Jess? Thanks, Memo. Yeah, that's right. I did have a chance to catch up with Accuracy. I asked him a little bit about, you know, taking that first L at the hands of Heretics yesterday. And, you know, he basically said, well, we underperformed and that's it. But we're not really letting it bother us. We're kind of moving ahead. And, uh, you know, in this match versus Denial, we're just hoping to bounce back. Uh, and, you know, overall, he was just all smiles, didn't seem too stressed. And he would never say this, but I think that the Splice guys are expecting a little bit of an easier match here. Over on the side of Denial, I caught up with Whalers and, you know, asked him because he knows he he knows where they're at in the league and I asked him how are you feeling overall all things considered and he said yeah you know we, we know where we are we know what's going on um, but we just never give up and we're using all these matches now as practice we're doing everything we can to uh, look ahead to CWL Fort Worth so that's all I've got for now back on over to the casters thank you very much Jess and uh, I will say very good to hear from accuracy I'd like to hear a bit more from Temp I want to hear him you know get some more uh, bars out there if you like however uh, for, for these guys but, you know, yes, a, a map victory. However, a lot of people would have put uh, a bit more dominance on that map. For these guys, it's not going to stress them. They're not going to be worried that they only won by X amount at this very moment. But I think if Splice go back and rewatch that, they definitely have places to improve. And do you see Hacienda as maybe a weak spot for, for Splice? You know, yesterday they lost it to Heretics. Today it was pushed by Denial. Or, or is it just kind of on the day for these guys at this moment? I don't know. If, I, I wouldn't say weak spot, but I would say like something to look at, point of concern. And, and again, if their entire goal right now is to widen their map pool as much as you possibly can into Fort Worth, it's great to see these mistakes. Like, you want to play against teams and be like, okay, like, well, you know, we got broken on the fences hill a couple times. What went wrong? And try to go back to the drawing boards. Because they're to the point now where they're good enough at everything that it's the little details that are going to be getting to them. Like, there's a couple teams that we have in this division where it's like, well, what's the problem? Be like, everything? <laughs> like, you have to fix everything and, like, go back to the drawing boards. But they're essentially at a point where they're just trying to fine-tune their gameplay as much as possible. 
well, Arsenal coming up for the next couple. However, frequency and payload may be seen if Denial keep up this pace uh, and push splice. Who knows what can happen here? A 43-point game in map number one. But as we head into Search and Destroy and we head over to Arsenal, this was obviously Denial's pick coming into this one. Uh, maybe they can cause a stir, of course. Yes, I will outline the favorites being spliced come into this. A lot of people would have uh, and will be guessing for a 3-0. With Arsenal, of course, we've seen some crazy comebacks. We've seen some blowouts by all means. And as we jump on board with Nache here on the offense, let's flick over. Let's see what they're doing. Heading over to B. As Paradox in the back, he's uh, guiding us to the sniper. I was about to say the sniper may be, you know, only 20% of the map at any given time, but it's my favorite thing to look at, and you essentially have to watch so you don't miss any action. And Brezzi, he's been on point with the sniper as well. Not even like one of the flashier. He just connects high rate of accuracy. And, well, you don't even need to watch him do anything because his teammates are doing all of the work for him. First and second kills go their way. Aqua getting challenged out by Whaler, staying alive, looking for more, but eventually just gets cleaned up. And, well, Temp going on the flank, even if he can find two. Still going to be down a man count. There's number one. Looking for Brezzi in the window, but 4v2 for Denial. They get this bomb down. It's up to Looney and Temp to try to make some magic happen. Here we go. Can the magic start now? He'll have to start with Temp as uh, he finds himself out of the map. And he's going to see himself reset for uh, round number two. Strong start for Denial. Picking up round number one here. And again, just getting that uh, bit of confidence boost for the search and destroy. And Splice, they're just going to have to forget about that one. It's like the observer's dilemma. You have a sniper on the map, <laughs> and it's like you ha like you can't afford to miss anything in that regard. And well, then the first bloods just appear somewhere else. But either way, I, I think a pretty solid round from denial. Not only do you get the first bloods, but ten picks up a kill. You have someone that's there for the trades. Aqua nearly just destroys Whalers, but Whalers gets out with his life, and then you have the help. And even there at the end, Looney. It seemed like there was a moment where he might have been able to sneak through the window. Someone covered it just in the nick of time, and, and they were to help him out. So solid first round, but of course. Only the first round, and Splice back on the attack, leaning towards this B site. Seen Looney do that one before. He doesn't do any damage but to the concrete wall behind him. 60 seconds left on the clock. Looney looking for that first blood. Will not see anything as of yet, but here's the ICR, I believe, of Natche. Pulsing down to just 60 HP. He'll have used that stim shot. All 10 players alive unless... Well, there we go. Whaler's first to fall. Accuracy. Bobbing and weaving in that wall. My goodness, was that a collateral? No, it was not. You okay, two all right. Kills, but very, very quick. <laughs> I thought one was on the ledge and one was on the back step. I was like, what's just happened? What have we missed? But all we saw was Splice take control of this one. 5v2. Accuracy falls at a advantageous position. Temp levels it up here with one of his own, but he's going to be the last alive now. And will go down. Temp finalizing round number two. Would have been nice to see a collateral, but oh well. These things happen, and again, that's the, the observer's dilemma. Do you want to watch the... And he doesn't even get to play the game. When he picks up two back-to-back, -back, doesn't even get to play the game because Temp did it at the end. Because Temp shot someone in the back. Yeah. Well, he shot a guy in the front at least for the second one. But okay. I who see. makes the big plays to win the round? Is it Looney getting the opening kills? No. Definitely not. It is Temp cleaning up the final two where he knew exactly where they were. Well, all tied here as we head to round number three. Strong rounds for both squads. And again, you know, you go into this one and, and denial with their, you know, woes of being at the Pro League. You know, you have to have, you know, a quote unquote, a worst team in the division or a worst team in the league. It's hard being that team, but, you know, a lot of people didn't even dub this team to get here. You know, they've uh, done a little bit better than expected, but Sun off the bat is going to be Natche. He gets away with his life here. No kills made just yet as accuracy will back down. But as I was kind of referring to before, denial. It must really suck, that pressure building, game after game after game, coming out with those L's. Not easy to take on the chin. And of course, you know, France, the whole, the whole French community behind them. Accuracy is also essentially behind him, shooting Whalers in the back. That's a free pick, number one. Brezzi nearly gets a kill, but he gets traded off with stun, but he's safe. And he has the teammate support as well. Risk now trapped in a corner. He's going to get cleaned up. The nade isn't going to connect with anybody. Well, now it's down to Nat Shea for the 1v3. Well, he's just going to get hunted down from every angle. That was a very quick and very easy retake coming in from Splice. And really, I think the, the biggest thing is Whalers just get shot in the back from free. Accuracy, finding a nice angle on the map to open up the round. The fuse will come in. And that'll be the round here. Whalers and the boys of Denial. 
Trying to push this as far as they can. Heavy hitters on Splice, trying to close this out in a 3-0 fashion. Looney did get the final kill. Picked himself up. One on the bomb as well. There's one tucked away. That being risk. And Looney, a player that gets overlooked a lot of the time. I think this year, more than any, he's getting the recognition that he deserves. But the amount of times Looney has kind of taken players under his wing and risen them to the top. It's incredible to see. And again, Splice doing big things in Vegas. And we'll be looking at Fort Worth as a potential championship for uh, a lot of reasons. It's just about how good can they get. Well, if you want to talk about things getting good, Looney, of course, a large 10 points away. And, of course, honestly, he could even just wait for the tack 5 and then just call that in. He'll get streaks that way. So you could just play the patient game. You could do essentially whatever you want. Doesn't even need to plant the bomb to make it happen. And, well, Splice, they're going for a very passive setup for the moment. So, of course, Denial's credit. They have quite a bit of map control over on the B side of things. They got two players waiting to deal with Lobby, and you even have Zeke in the back in case the pressure starts mounting towards A. So, Look at number 10 as well. Like you said, Blue he's just waiting for that top five. He's just sat back. He's like, I've also got it. Nearly got it, guys. He's, of course, will get that, uh, that score streak. Was providing that. Aqua's going to dip away. Quick slide. And now three of them. I say three Jids actually dipped out of that one. With 35 seconds left. There's the tac 5 boost. There's the score streak. Everything's going to come in. Let it rain. Let it pour. And uh, a cluster on top of Aqua. Two go down to the lightning strike. Just a 3v2. And after everything invested here, not a bad position for denial, I would say. But with 20 seconds left, Splice most definitely the favorable one. But Risk is awaiting. And another team kill will come in for the round number four here. And with it down to Zeke here again, Splice after two team kills. A specialist invested. A score streak invested. Do get that bomb down and should be able to close this one out. Zeke is just praying for a pick, but Jared and Accuracy are going to shoulder peek about 17,000 times. And Zeke says, okay, not having any of this. I'll go take a toll off the map. But I, I mean, it's perfect SD gameplay. It's not complicated coming out from Spice. It's literally just Looney saying, it's going to take 30, 45 seconds, maybe even a minute. I'll get the TAC 5, get the Lightning. And what Spice does, get full control of the middle of the map. They sent three players up in the window. So now we talked about all the control over towards B that Denial had. Well, now they're stuck outside. You can't go in the window because all Spice is waiting there. And even with accuracy, shooting his teammate in the back of the head, even with Temp somehow nading his teammate. I don't know if it hit the door, like what was going on. Even with all that chaos, still a pretty comfortable and easy round win. I, I mean, Denial made one kill. Uh, you know, Splice actually team killed two of their own. Uh, but the lightning strike came in from Looney. Again, big, big things for him. He's 8-1 and one now. He's got himself a Hellstorm. And it seems like it's spiraling out of control here for Denial. However, plenty of time still to go. Round number 5 as we have 75 seconds left on the clock. Jude's going to back on down with that concussion available. Accuracy's at the back too. He trades one out before getting taken down. Big concussion. Else uh, finds nothing. I was going to say denial inside. Like Spice had to set up again. They get control of the inside of the map, but denial is able to break through. Of course, so the stun makes it incredibly easy for Aqua to pick up that kill. And all said and done, Spice to use the Hellstorm to help them get a three v two advantage. Of course, Looney does have a sniper, so it's not the easiest spot in the world. But Aqua, if he's picking up all the kills, well, it is incredibly helpful. Now Zeke is trapped in between a couple of Spice players, which will eventually be a free kill for none other than Looney. And this just seems like a snowball effect coming in for the map. It's like Looney picks up a couple nice kills with the Sniper for one round, gets a couple kills with the Maddox for the next. All of a sudden, he has streaks, and now you got two rounds in a row where the streaks just kind of force your hand, where everyone has to flood in this door, which, granted, they were able to pick up a kill, but then Aqua was just feasting on them in there after. You saw them trying to wolf pack there and push around, but it doesn't work out for them. Splice once again take the round here and they had a lot to play with. I think the, the Hellstorm was invested. Sorry, I correct myself there. I thought it was saved, but didn't find anything in that round. But four to one. What have we got to play with here? No specialist. Zeke's the closest for the attack five boost, but breezy. Can he find something with the sniper? Looney. Ooh, nearly takes Jerd down. Or Jerd was able to get the first blood, traded out. All the kills going the way of Splice. Nache is up top, trying to make things even. Looking for more, actually picks up a pretty huge kill against Temp. Now he's trying to dodge bullets through the wall, which, well, accuracy takes him down. And now it's Ooh. up to Brezzi, who, 
Man might have x-ray vision, oh. but hit markers are plenty. Keep in mind, does not have FMJ on that gun. And frankly, even if he had it, probably would have gotten a hit marker. Yeah, he, he tags both players down to about 10 HP. Um, but they're back up to 150 apiece here now. 2v1, your favorite splice again. Uh, flashy shots from Breezy. Can he find the first? Yes, he can. Accuracy goes down and the bomb will fall as well. Now, this is where Aqua doesn't want to peek, doesn't want to give anything. He slides away. He's trying to find information. I think he's got that information. He's going to slide. As is Breezy. Concussion available. He's going to tag up Aqua. He's going to run with the pistol. He's going to find the first, find the second, and finalize the kill. Very well played from Breezy there. Overall, you know, a round which you'd uh, think Splice having under control, but that's the power of, you know, Tack Mask. And that is a nice shot, and then that is the dream when you can cuss somebody and that Tack Mask symbol doesn't appear. Like, oh, freeze kill. Other side of the map, I got time. I will run over, I'll do a little <laughs> dance, I'll throw down the chicken spray paint can, whatever you want. And despite the 1v2, it's Nash that gets to play the game, but for good reason as well. He's getting tagged up left and right, and he still challenges Temp, and that was completely necessary. If he doesn't get a second kill there, that round is hopeless. Well, unless Brezzy does more crazy <laughs> stuff, but probably hopeless. Shooting through vents. You saw at the end of that round, though, Temp and the guys were, were still smiling, still happy with what's going on. I think they would knew the more fortunate events there, but 4-2 to two, as it currently stands here. Looney, big things with 9 to his name. Still rocking the Paladin. Sniper versus Sniper. Looney comes out on top. Trying to find that second one. I thought he saw the arm of Whalers there. He does. He tags the leg. The kneecap gets taken off, but... It's 2019. A stim shot can put that kneecap right back on. 5v4. 5v3. Splice looking comfortable. You can put the kneecap back on, but the organs, if you lose too many of them. Still going to do the damage. All but a matter of waiting for this final player to fall. It's Jerg that gets the kill, and a team kill helped it out. Looney, man, when you think of Looney, the thing that does not come to your mind is Dominant Sniper. But in Black Ops 4, he's been up there. I, I don't know exactly where like the Sniper ranks are going to fall, but he is definitely in the conversation for being among the best. And again, I think he has, what, 10, 11 kills so far this game. At least three or four of them have been from a Sniper. So... He's been connecting with some nice shots, winning the battle outright. It's funny you should say that about Looney because it, even like last year, it's like, you know, the players that are just fun to watch. You know, sometimes you get like Huke, for example, you know, he's just flashy. It's crazy to watch. Or Jerd because he's fast, aggressive. Looney was never that player for me. But this year, he's always been like, you know, a player which I want to keep my eye out for. He's the one that I look at the minimap. I see what he's doing. And again, you know, player for a very, very long time. He does get tagged up a little bit lucky as he's going to re-challenge this one. He's not going to find him here, but Looney, most definitely one of the best players in the league. Whalers will shut down Jurd. Sniper doesn't connect, as it's still alive for both teams. Tac 5, though, has been initiated for denial. And, of course, that means Looney is basically not useless here, but it's going to be incredibly difficult for him to help out. But he's actually going to get the help. I think Aqua tagged him up. He gets the connection with the one with the sniper, gets it with the pistol, but does it matter? No, because risk comes in the end. And that is a round that goes very different. If not for the attack five, the denial pops. And they will take what they can get with a nice flank coming in from risk. Yeah, it certainly was a good flank. And that's a really good kill, an important one to say the least. Looney actually find one with a, with a sniper. He got one with a pistol off screen. And I tell you what, this, if he had maybe half a second more, I think this is the final kill here. He was looking for the no scope, <laughs> but he couldn't get it in time. Strong stuff from Riss, though. Really good flank. Always funny when you say, like, ah, oh, Looney, he's not going to be useful because they got attack five and instantly picks up two kills. Great. <laughs> Definitely that was a, a team effort. I think Aqua tagged up a handful of players, but it's always funny how these things work out. Could have been a collateral again, but uh, I'll have to hold on to that dream for a little bit longer. Accuracy. Dancing with the devil here. The thermal for Breeze. Always changing. Numerous times here. It's a bit indecisive, but 5-3. Match point here for Splice. Use the sniper, sniff out a bit of information. Now Splice actually playing fairly aggressive on the map. Temp, of course, most especially. He is flying around back. He is as solo as possible. Does not open the door so they can't hear him. They know he's here, though, but he picks up the kill anyway. Wins the 1v1. He gets traded, but now look at Denial. He got four players in the bottom left quadrant of the map. 48 seconds for them to either get kills or plant the bomb. And this is a lot of map coverage right now for Splice, who are on one side of the map doing the right thing leaving over towards B. Of course, that's exactly where that bomb is going to be going. 
accuracy, hiding in the bushes. It's not going to be needed just yet. I think one player's just on the right of him there. He's not going to see him. I think he's just been called out by Jerd. And accuracy's like, where is he? I can't see him. Aqua's dealt with him, no problem. 4v3, 20 seconds left. Bomb goes down, vision pulse popped. I was going to say, now Aqua can see through walls. You know the guy's on bomb. Looney's just going to commit. And while his teammates are going to say, well, that one didn't pay out. Now Brezzi, of course, has a grab slam. Might have to invest it as well because he needs this round win. It's only a 3v3. He's stunned out. Can't use anything. Spice gets the kills. All of a sudden, Zeke, last man standing. He's got an ICR. And Jerd <laughs> has a grab slam. And uh, that is a uh, grab slam will win that. 10 out of yeah. 10 times at that range. It will. I just like the way that he was, his dreams. He was in a 4x4, four four, <laughs> a ladder behind him. The nice one thing you don't want to see. Yeah, a grab slam raining down in you. Again, Splice come out on top for that one. Search and destroy. It was a little bit more dominant. And I will say, Denial, they uh, they felt the Wrath of Looney Sniper a couple of times on this one. However, Search and Destroy is done. Hardpoint is done. Both go in favor of Splice and Denial's woes continue. However, coming up after the break, it is going to be control. Can they find anything? Tune in after the break. The Call of Duty World League is presented by PlayStation 4, the official platform of the CWL. Astro Gaming, the official headset and mix amp of the CWL. And Republic of Gamers, the official monitor of the CWL. Level up the game. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Splice and Denial going head to head here. Hard point close. Search and destroy. Not so close. Myself, Momo, joined by Chance. Joined with Chance, should I say, on this one. Uh, heading to Arsenal Control here. This is where you'd expect Splice to kind of end this series here. Denial, of course, wanting to push this out as long as possible, but Arsenal Control coming up next. Of course, uh, one of the biggest things about Arsenal Control is who spawns on defense first. Because as you know, overtime rules, just a flip-flop. You start on defense, you go to game five, you end on defense. And I don't know the exact percentages, JP. <laughs> definitely let me know if you have them. Uh, this is definitely one of the more defensive side of maps. So just something to consider in the yeah. back of your mind when you're thinking long-term in this series. Or in this map, not the series. I'm sure Splice won't want to come down to a round five in control, though. However, maybe this is where Denial stir things up as we jump into it. Splice going head first for B. Luna's going to fall straight away, and the pressure is going to be put on. But both players will fall. And Aqua's going to join him, too. Yeah, I can see, of course, ICR. That's the kind of gunfight you want to have there. Of course, quite a bit of pressure poured over towards B from, honestly, both teams. But Denial, of course, makes the better of it and do a pretty nice job of rotating back to the other side of the map. They respond to exactly what Splice is going to do pretty well. Unfortunately, though, Looney just able to get one kill for free. Now the kills are going the way of Splice. Whalers gets read like a book. Aqua was there three seconds in advance. So it was a nice job of responding to where the pressure was going to come. Of course, though, Denial just does not handle the gunfights very well. Now Splice is in a position where they're at least trying to slow that game clock down, keep at least one body over towards A, see how many kills on the map you can get, because Aqua right now being as annoying as possible. On the defensive side, that now get the first couple of kills. I would have liked to have seen the plays in A push up. They kind of just sat back on that zone, and they let Splice just kind of walk on in and take it away from them. Talking to zone A, it's gone. 23 to 22 in the life count here, and now Splice can take their time, be very aggressive as two players go down for either team here. As we now start to see maybe Whalers on the outskirts having a gun fight. Want to pull that trophy away, Whalers. You've got Aqua to deal with, and he will do that. Good positioning as well. You have the ICR. Not a gunfight you want to take, so just punch him for 145 damage. Take him right down. So, like the positioning, and now he's in a pretty solid power position as well. Of course, Looney in the vents. Two essentially free kills. Players looking to hunt down Jurd. Of course, though, you got Brezzi on the flank. At least able to take one down. And this is fairly chaotic for Spice. He got players in the back he got to deal with. He got Whalers posted up with the ICR. And this is just giving Brezzi more free kills. By the way, Risk is picking up two pieces inside the hill. And now that life advantage is slowly starting to dwindle for Spice, who, well, they want to go for the full rotation across the map. And again, Denial on the ball. Nache spotting out that rotation. I actually like what he did there, getting that stun out and basically saying everyone's on the flank, but he gets out with his life. He could have slid out, challenge one, gone down and maybe picked one up himself, but he just forgets about it. They've got the life count advantage. He calls all the information out that they need. There's still plenty of concussions to play with. Tatmas should be on at this point. Trades do go down. The zone is in control for Splice right now, but here comes the retake. Of course, Aqua's going to be weak, tense in the back. Whalers knows the player's near him, but he takes down the guy in the back to help out his team a little bit more. Of course, Spice is inside the hill, and well, now they actually have a, a fairly decent bit of control. You got Brezzi that's thinking of full flanking right away, but the time right now, ticking the way of Spice, they're picking up kills, trying to make it happen, and still just coming. Brezzi finally on the flank, has an ICR, oh. maybe here in the nick of time, but you got to finish the kills. Oh, you've got to finish it. Luckily for him, Risk finds three. Life count now six to nine. This is great for Denials. Now Shane Brezzi picks up a couple as well, and now it's simply picking up the, these lives. You know, you need to make these kills without trading out. Oh, and that's going to be the first one to Splice. Five plays eight. Of course, they do have good enough time for one push. And of course, because you don't respawn anymore, one push is all they get. Three players right now trying to storm through lobby. Z by himself wants to back up. And Nache spotted out the information. Essentially, the crossfire is going to be perfect. And now, of course, there's three, make it two, make it one. Accuracy, last man standing, gets dropped as soon as you say it. And that is a first defensive round win coming in from Denial. Yeah, you talked about the defense obviously being a little stronger, if you like, a bit more preferred if some may say, but uh, Splice, they gave it a good shot here. And I tell you what, they did get two ticks onto B. But it simply wasn't enough. Nice little triple from Chris there. As we head into the second round, we'll flip it over and Splice will now be on the defense here. We're gonna see if the Nile can, I mean, you can, if you're thinking creatively, you have to bring something to the table to try to get these offensive round wins, whether it be off the opening break, whether it be utilized specialists or score streaks, whatever it is, but of course, no score streaks, no specialists on board just yet. 
Denial of heavily sacked into his site, trying to get the kills if they can find them. Stuns are going to help if you can push the kill on Jert. He's going to fall, and while it looks like they're going to be successful, no men fall for Denial. They pick up four kills along the way, full control, and it looks like Spice, they're just going to chalk this one up. They're going to try to, well, trap Denial inside if they can. Well, Denial not to lose a life here. Couple to play with. My goodness, about getting tagged here. Fight in the vents to go down. This is the only offense here. Maybe a chance for Denial to strike. But look at the spread on that minimap, those yellow arrows. One player sat on the zone. That'd be an accuracy here, but pushing around. I think Jude could be a bit of a nuisance in the side. He's going to pick up Natche. Concussion goes down. Nicely traded out, and here comes the streaks. Got number one. Pop the tack five to get you closer to number two or just get the kills. Now Zeke is starting to encroach on gunship territory. And if you have problems winning on offense, get a gunship or not. It could help. Lightning strike, I think, was invested there and uh, finds nothing for it. 21 to 25. Splice catching up on the life count. Nat Shea does shut him down. Zeke still with a hellstorm available. And you've got to be in that right position to use that hellstorm. Just stays alive, my goodness. He does have the help, and I think that's going to be crucial to have that help of Aqua. Aqua goes down. Jerd finds one. Can he find the second? Jiggle peek. Shoulder peek here. Back and forward. Going to go down. And these lives are just favoring denial. Quite heavily so. And again, even if things get risky, we talked about it at the start. If you want to win an offense, it helps out. Score streaks and specialists. Well, here's at least the Hellstorm. Should be good to find one. And now he's just slowing it down. That means the now can get inside the hill. Of course, Vents is open, but, well, Risk, he knows that before we do. Looney, you're going to have to make a move at some point, but good luck winning this gunfight. And if you want to, you can even use the War Machine, but the stun is what's going to come out. Looney finds kill number one. Him and Aqua get the kills number two. And that is, I mean, one of the best stuns you could see in terms of rebreaking the hill. I tell you what, nicely done. Uh, still attack five available. Nine to 17. If Splice even do this, I'd be uh, amazed. And credit to them for breaking back into B, but... They have got to go huge. They've got to trade at pretty much a 2.0 ratio. Tac 5 is available for Zeke. Does he need it though? Does he invest this to secure it? Or do they try and save it for the later rounds? Time is ticking. Actually, spot now. Two separate players. Player number one falls. Now Splice is going to have to turn around when the pressure from the front is coming in. He asked if they had to use it. In my head, I was thinking yes, but denial, they're going to say no. 15 to 3 life advantage, and they have the hill going up two to nothing and then they got a couple specialists going into this rec this next round this is denial looking arguably the best we have seen them so far in the pro league on this one particular map they're, they're looking great by all means uh i'll give them the credit they look good on half point as well the search and destroy they got blown out of the water but this control against one of the best teams in the world right now they're looking fantastic of course, we've seen teams before go 2-0 up, be pushed to a round five. I said at the start of this, Splice won't want to be pushing to a round five. I think they will now. They'll take a round five. I, I was just going to say, like, even at the hard point, Denial looked great for, what, 75, 80% of the game, and then Splice just kind of took over. Of course, they absolutely have their work cut out for them because you're going in this round three where the snowball's kind of kicking. You have to win a round on offense and just look at the specialists. You're getting close to yours if you don't have them already for Splice. Then, of course, on the flip side, they're either closer or already have them. The question is, when do you want to invest? Amaku is going to use his Tempest to take down his teammate. Not the best start you could have, but he's trying to do some damage on the flip side as well. He's going to be able to take down Breggi. Cleans him up. You have the one life advantage. And now if you're Denial, how much do you really want to force this? Nash on the flank, though, wants to go for at least one kill. Does get traded out. And unfortunately for him, he doesn't take down the Tempest. So Aqua still might be able to look and find potentially one or two more kills with it, but it looks like no one goes for the challenge. The time is going to tick down on that. So if you use the Tempest, you at least get the A point. Zone A, gone. This is pretty much the same as the uh, last offensive round. Full splice here, and Graf Slam available for Jurd. We've seen some great things from it, but... Again, they are pushing them back. They're not letting, but number one on five accuracy. And Looney there on the flank. They could do some damage as well, but Graf Slam, you don't want to invest it onto your teammates. Aqua trades things out. Looney now getting up in the face here, and that's with the Maddox. It'll be a triple kill, but look at the aggression. Look in, in which direction they're pushing. Chance, this is a little bit odd in the fact that they've got A and now they're pushing through the spawn rather than to B. What do you make of that? Uh, they're just going for spawn kills. Keep them trapped in the base. Leave the players that are near spawn alone and pick up as many kills as possible, which they're doing a fairly decent job of for the moment. 
But of course, a, a minute and 25 is ticking down. You got a vision pulse at this point for either side. Accuracy still just trying to kill everything in sight. 125 off his streaks. And honestly, hey, you might need to use the vision pulse just to try and get it. Brezzy, though, is going to shut him down with the SOG. Might have been an opening for Splice and Brezzy by some miracle is able to pick up three on the way, but still, Spice trying to pour in the pressure, still trying to go for these spawn kills. It's just team deathmatch at this point. They don't even care about B. They know they've got a minute to basically win a 16 to 13 at this given time, but with four players, look at the B zone. Vision Pulse has been invested. Whalers denies Looney. That is going up very, very fast, and he's going to fall as well. This is looking good for Splice. Oh, this is it. You got the Vision Balls players force in the back. Like, do you even want to try to go for it? If you get players inside, you got a War Machine, got a Tempest, but you got Turd with a Grass Slam. And how well did that stretch just work? If they can finish it off, the ticket's coming in. Trying to contest it, and it looks like Denial barely by the skin of their teeth holding on. And 10 to 10 on life. That's the thing, is it's 10 to 10. That was basically a win, and Jordan and Temple, like, we don't need to use our War Machine. We don't need our Graphs up. They may need them right now. This could get messy. Oh. Now Vision Pulse has been popped either way. The tables are turned. Denial are looking for the 3-0. This is where for Splice, you got your head in your hands. You're, you're thinking, what on earth have we just thrown away? 25 seconds is all that they've got. Oh, man. I, I thought that play from Splice was perfect. And then all oh, the collapse just happened so fast. Now you got to check the map. You got to use the grab slam, but only for one player. You get traded. Is there a trophy in the hill? It looks like not. Temp able to find one. You're still a tick away, but you're going to fall. You do trade it out. 6v5, 10 seconds. They just have to sprint in the hill. They got to sprint in the hill, and they got to deal with risk. It's such a tough spot to be in. Aqua's going to fall, and it looks like Denial should be good. Bar a hero play. Jurd gets traded out as well, and Denial take the control against Splice. They get the map win on board. And they don't win it 3-1 or 3-2. They 3-0'd Splice right there, and... We both know at the point where I think Jerd was kind of on the stairs. He had his graph slam. We were like, oh, we could use it just to finish him off, but uh, he doesn't really need to. He saves that. So does 10 with the war machine, and, and then they have to use it. They start to almost use it in desperation. It goes out the window. It is done and dusted. Now we go over to, uh, obviously, our fourth map being Hardpoint. Uh, and this is where, you know, Denial, they get a bit of momentum. They get that hype that, you know, they'll be happy for. We're going to check back into the control and just watch the very end of that and just kind of recap how it went down. This is the, the grass line where Jerd goes down there. Could have been different. And you know who it was, actually? Number nine on the minimap, Brezzy. He went on a flank again. I think we saw that exact same thing on the first round where Splice is getting very, very close to capping the B point, and he flanks just in the nick of time. He was able to take down two, and then all the pressure you had inside the hill, if you lose half your resources, well, one, you stop capping the point as quickly as you were, because I really thought Splice had that. Like, they're going oh, for spawn too. kills that entire time, and then as soon as they get the clearance, they clear out the guys that are over towards the bottom side of the minimap, then they're all just flood the hill. They have the vision pulse, so... It was close to perfectly executed, and then, well, they just got flanked. And the crazy thing is, if they win it right there, they would have War Machine and Grav Slam to play with it yep. the next round, you know, potentially push it to a, a round five, but no. Nah, -uh. not under Niles watch. These guys take the map, and it ends just like that. The life count was uh, an interesting one at the end of it as well, because it was, like I said before, it was kind of like Team Deathrash for a large majority of that game, or that round, should I say. Denier, though, props to these guys. Another round on the board, sorry, another map on the board. Uh, you were talking about on the desk, you know, we've seen, quote, unquote, much worse, and I couldn't agree more with you uh, when you go back to the likes of Epsilon, who just weren't winning maps. These guys, they have something. Yes, they're going against the biggest, the best competition that we've ever had in the, in the Pro League, and yes, they could be, quote, unquote, the worst in their division, but th they're coming out of series with something, usually. And, and something that was cool as well is, like, so teams like Accelerate, E6, like, they obviously are better in the standings. They look like a better team than Denial. I don't think anyone's going to argue that. But some of the things that they were doing on Arsenal Control, because that's what we saw from the E6 and Accelerate series, not doing a good job uh, of on defense when you have control of the B side of, like, watching the flank. What do we see Nat Shade doing? He's already in top mid, calling it out. They're using stuns. They're baiting switch. Like, they're doing a lot of things right. And then yeah. sometimes they just get run over by gun skill, by moments of you collapse, maybe chaos in the comms. Who knows what the issues are, but they still have a lot of things that are clearly doing well for them. They just need to be a lot better. But you see a glimpse, I think, in that control of how good they can be. Well, there we have it. We're going to hit a quick restart here as uh, the boys do get ready. Splice will have to take that one on the chin as they go into this hard point. 
And uh, again, we've seen Splice play frequency. The way that they control uh, the first half point over by you, they just seem to kind of bully teams out of there. I'm wondering, how did Denial go toe-to-toe -to -toe on this uh, map mode? Obviously, we saw them previously on Hacienda, which I feel maybe favors them a little bit more. Um, but again, on frequency, I feel like we may see a little bit more fast-paced, aggressive playstyle from the likes of Jurd and Temp, even Looney, you know, the, the way that these guys can play together. Uh, I kind of, not based on the teams, but I kind of lean towards spicy play style here. I mean, yeah, you, you think about that first hill, you think about how good is the shot punch and then how good is like Jurd at yeah. the shot punch. And I mean, if you're looking for kind of like the counterpoint, you need guys like Brezzi to have big games. Risk can't afford to slow down at any bit from what he had in the control, but if you talk about that SOG battle, Brezzi, this guy, he's going to have to have that same type caliber performance from what we saw from him in the control. Like yeah. He was making big plays in the control. You're going to need those big plays. More than one, by the way, to take down a team like Splice. Or a gunship. You can just get that. Just a higher silly for a map. Let him nice. get a gunship. The, uh, it was interesting to see the gunship actually involved. I mean, picked up quite a few kills itself, but it, it's just kind of like a fear factor, if you like, when you uh, hear it's called in. But let's get into this one. Jurd, we highlight him at the start with his shot punch. He's going to get in, slip around. He's going to get punched in the face. Risk takes him down. The man that needs to pick it up. And you talk about the U control. Risk finds three on the opening. Zeke gets the other two. And I'm certain the other guys helped out. But either way, as good of an opening break as you could ask for. That is exactly what I expected for Splice. For Splice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and honestly, I, I'm kind of going to be happier to see Denial going toe to toe. But now we hey. see Splice just jump back in and get in the action. This time it's uh, a little bit split there. Looney Temp Accuracy all picking up kills as well. And now pushing through for the spawns. Aqua's going to be taken down. Jurd will have to regen. But the trade most definitely should come in. And it will. It's Risk again. Five and one he starts there. Finally taken down. No score streaks. Uh, but Temp fighting for these spawns. Oh, and Temp is getting nades in as well. If he can at least just stay alive and let Looney come help him out, which Looney has a gunfight of his own. So Temp is going to fall on the back. Looney wins his, and now it's like a foot race of who can get to the back spawns quicker. It looks like Spice is there. First, he got accuracy all the way in the back. So as good of the opening break was for Denial, everything since then was going away of Spice. And then, well, the kill feed, the gunfights, Denial does stabilize, and that's huge as well. If that does not pan out, that rotation is second. That's okay. just like Spice looking fantastic. Risk is looking great, by the it's way, disgusting. here. He's having a, a fun time. The Maddox is working for him, 29 to 29, as we do see Splice push back, tested. Uh, and again, yeah, we saw Denial, fantastic kind of opener on the, on the first point. Splice bite back. On the second point, you know, Splice had that, and Denial just taken away from them again. So back and forth already. Trying to hold on as well. Risk seemingly has not slowed down at all. 10 and 3, not too bad. And well, then just takes a tumble off the map. So if anything is going to slow him down, it might as well be gravity. Of course, it's interesting to note Splice now, they have the back spawns. It's not what they want. But of course, I don't know if he got spotted out. Jurd actually just got gifted a free flank. And now Zeke is saying, oh dear, I have to worry about everything. And now he's getting shoulder peek left and right. And that is Jurd making the absolute best of a bad situation. And he's actually going to get taken down by Risk, but with uh, the kill of Natsha, he basically gets that one as well. All things covered for Splice. They are down by 20 points here, but they're in a very powerful position. Controlling the window, controlling everything. Aqua, 10, Jurd, and Aqua again. My goodness, that is uh, how to hold the point. As it seems like this series, we have seen more stuns just completely run people over than any other series. Like, I don't know if that's just me, but I mean, like we saw it in the control. We saw like three players right there die to his stun. The concussion's apparently on we, point. We saw it in the search and destroy as well. In, in, in the rounds, it was uh, a lot of concussions by all means. Kids, stay safe. Use tag maps. Use more of the tag maps. I don't even know. <laughs> have better trophies, have better everything. But Yeah, trophies. That's maybe the, 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 the one thing that both teams aren't using as much as what we uh, have seen. Uh, but again, denial breakthrough. They get the scrap time and bottom might be controlled by Splice. But again, super close game. Trying to keep it competitive. Zeke, though, stunned, is going to die. I, it's just one of those things. I, I, I'm sure this happens all the time. I don't know if Paradox has just been a wizard with catching all the stun deaths and stun kills, but I don't know. Just something to keep in the back of your mind is, well, Splice trying to go back on the attack. Someone wins the gunfight mid-map, which means there's a bit of an opening inside the hill. It's essentially just Risk by himself. He's only got one teammate. Wins the first, gets taken down for the second. And while Brezzi, yes, he wins the gunfights, but Splice did their job. Break gone through. And again, just trying to get this lead to flip-flop another time. There's the clusters. 
don't believe Wayless is one player who's using trophies. We may see that, but he's going high. I'm not sure about the play. I'm not sure if it's a distraction, but he had no grab slam to go in with. Going that high as well, you're going to be falling straight back down into the hands of the likes of Jurd. Uh, that's 88 to 88. It is all tied up here. Splice do take the lead once again, but this just reminds me of map one. So close. Playing as well as you can. It is going to be denial inside of this hill early on, but if you remember in the first set of rotations, they were inside the hill early on, and Splice retook it with ease, with the quickness. As soon as you get there, they just died. Turd's the one making the opening break, and well, him and Temper getting kills. The response is there, but for how long? This is Jerd at his best, trying to beat down everyone left and right. Picks up another kill. At the very least, is contesting. But while all of this has gone on, Splice has even split flip spawns. Jerd does get taken down from the grab slam, so it looks like the not able to stabilize, but that is still a lot going right for Splice, at least slightly. Well, Denial still in the lead. They break the 100 mark first. Tempest connects with one. Got to recharge that. My goodness, risky to push out there from Natshe, but he has the teammates to back it up, and he's actually closer. Streaks here, one player sliding in. He does find him, but not quick enough. Talking of streaks, the risk is only 35 away, and he's got a war machine to play with. He's looking for... That lightning strike, of course, going into the, the lower side of the map in a short while. It could be beneficial. Natchez, he's not going to find himself another triple. No, he's not just the double here, but Denial still going at Splice's throat here and taking them down. Lightning strike available. Denial are looking superb. Uh, and they're just aggressive as well. Like you're playing for streaks and you're just flying out mid-map and just taking those gunfights, but coming out on top. Whaler's watching the flank is able to pick up too. It's not early on for the stabilization. You already have two streaks. Of course, we did kind of say, like, maybe try to pull a silly. Whaler's on the back, picks up another two, stays alive. Looney does take him down, but now he's got teammates there to help, and Zeke is there for the trade. This is complete coverage from Denial. That's about as good of a hill as you could possibly have, but... We did see it on Hacienda. They did have a 50-point lead at one point, and Splice still did get that win. Lightning and Hellstorm in the hands of Risk. If they keep up this pace, uh, we, I, I talked about Jurd at the start, Aqua as well, uh, and Looney, the likes of how quick they can play on a map like this. Risk, Natche, these guys have been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Risk is 22 and 10, is that from what I can see yeah. here? Yeah. Lightning Strike and Hellstorm still to play with Jurd. He's gonna find himself a little lucky there. His teammate will help him out. And Splice is in control of the hard point with the favorable spawns. Temp's going to take down three. One being his own team. Does have control. Have the tag five as well. You talk about one man and risk earning streaks. Walt Temp is trying to respond with a pair of his own. Inside the hill, the contest is coming in. I think he's honestly just trying to juggle this hill, if anything. Well, you see, risk gets control. So now if you win some of these gunfights, the points go heavily your way, but the pressure's coming to the back. Has a big one-on-one, -on -one, and Zeke is trying to do what he can. And Brezzy comes out of nowhere, picks up two with the grass slam, tent by himself. His team is falling around him. He's just playing for streaks. 75 off. He just needs one kill. And he, oh, he's thinking about it. I think he's thinking about solo <laughs> challenging that gunfight, but he's not going to take it. By the way, Vision Pulse gets popped by Whalers to try to hunt him down. Yeah, and he does get taken down by Zeke. Vision Pulse, important here, obviously, being implemented straight away. 65 point lead nearly for denial. Over Splice on hard point. Game four. Control went their way if you missed it 3 0. Denial looking like a brand new team here. They're looking to break through on 200. Risk has invested the lightning strike. Does find one as Brezzy trades things out. Again, strong concussions. There's the double. This is just their game to lose. You got a Hellstorm slowing people down. And by slowing people down, I mean putting <laughs> them in the grave. He's able to find two. And, well, Temp and Looney trying to respond, but what can you do? You're taking difficult gunfights and maybe have to wait for the reinforcements. Temp with another nade kill, by the way. You talk about the stuns being damaging, but so have the clusters, but so has Denial on this map. They have just been playing outstanding across the board. The beatdown for Brezzy. More than a 100-point lead now for the French squad, and, well, they're trying to get a rotation into new. They got to be careful. You got Jurd just patiently waiting with this graph slam to do as much damage as he needs, and, well, they burned the vision pulse as well. They are just trying to stop the bleeding. Grab slam for Jurd a long way back here. 17 points is all denial need. How Splice get back into this one, I am not too sure, but they took map one and two. They lost the third. Still have control of the hard point now. Looking to retain it. It's got to be Jurd. Preempts the players. The grab slam gets used. Doesn't 
pay off for him, but he kind of had to use it. He, he was basically on his own. Three go down, make it four, a denial. Now use the attack five. They should be able to close it right here, right now. You got a trophy battle going on. A bunch of players inside the hill. A flank's coming in. The lightning strike might spot it out. The hellstorm's gonna help, and the kills going your way are gonna help. Denial looking fierce against Splice on frequency. 103 point win. Momo forcing the game number five. Yesterday it was the Spanish. Today it is the French. Splice are being tested. They are being pushed to their limits. And game five is around the corner here. Splice versus Denial. We will see who will take it after this quick break. Guys, do not go anywhere. The Call of Duty World League is brought to you by Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, the official beverage of the CWL. Scuff Gaming, the official controller of the CWL. And TCL, America's fastest growing TV brand. Game five is just around the corner. Splice take the first two. Denial bounce back with the control and hard point. And crazy enough chance, those last two games were pretty dominant. A 3-0 in the control, that hard point. You know, I can't even remember the exact score, but Denial looks so, so hot. Great stuff from Zeke. Breezy as well. This is how it's broken down, and that is the score. 250 to 147. Payload s and Is Denial about to reverse sweep Splice? That's a great question, Mama. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chuck. <laughs> For all that hype, bring it to it. Yeah, no, I'm, I, 
It's, it's just tough, right? Like, as good as Denial has looked on the past two maps, it's still in my mind I'm thinking Splice versus Denial. I just... It's hard, It's right? so tough to imagine anything other than a Splice win. And, like, one of the things I kind of brought up at the start was I want Splice to play, like, their worst map. To, you know, get a little bit of experience, try to widen the map pool as much as possible. But they haven't really done that. They've been kicking in some new tunes. They're trying to... It's not as extreme. They're not playing their worst maps. They have played this map before. It's fairly matched with Denial. So are they going to do it? Complete their reverse sweep? I do not know. Kaluni keeps hitting shots, though. It might be tough. Yeah, nobody knows, and that's the beauty of it here. Is already, players getting tagged, Jude with a long-range Sork, I believe. There. Oh, no, long-range, I take back. He's basically in there. Spawn as he finds one, and that's going to be the first to break down. B-Bomb is down, and now at a 5v4, Splice will definitely have the advantage. That player just got great timing on accuracy, though. He was trying to spot out the flank, and I don't even know if he saw both the players, and, well, the pinch is just going to be in. Splice is trying to put all the pressure on one side, and it looks like they might have responded well because you get a 1v1 Aqua versus Risk and search the two players you asked for. Aqua's going to spot it. Risk going on the hunt, and Aqua just trying to play his life. Comes back for the challenge, and it is Risk that comes out on top. The first blood goes the way of Spice. The first round win goes the way of Denial. Risk got three there, and I think he's going to be rewarded with that Diffuse. Uh, great stuff from him. And, and again, I feel like... Sorry, I paused to try and hear, hear Temp on what he's saying there, but I feel like Splice, this is the moment where you come out of that control, that hard point, you just got bodied for like two maps. The first round is like a, a bit of a, a boost, right? And they get the bomb down and lose a 5v4. It's it's almost another just kind of blow to the stomach here. Risk coming out on top there with three. And Denial looking very, very strong. And I tell you what, if there's a time to hit form chance, it is the end of your division as you're about to go into a major. I mean, yeah, you talk about a team who the <laughs> best experience they've ever going to get started a week and a half ago. All you want to see from these guys of improvement and in my mind, we've already seen some of that. And if they get this one here, honestly, that would just be insane for them. Splice, though, they are pouring on a ton of pressure. I have no idea who even shot Looney. I guess it's Whalers up top who gets out with his life. But first couple bloods, Denial get that man advantage. And, well, now Looney's feeling the pressure. He's only got the strife to boot. Two players already gone down for Splice. Not the best start to round number two here. Look at the bomb. Being pushed, being pressured. Bait and switch. Between the doorways. Breezy looking for a kill. Maybe an easier one. Oh my goodness. Cluster galore here. Accuracy taken down. A 4v2 now in the number favor. Denial. But does find one, but another concussion. Is that a double? He's going to find. Surely not with the pistol. We are going to see Risk slide on in. Pick up the kill. And another round to the good for Denial. And the worst part about that was for Splice. It is Risk that just keeps getting those kills. Even at the end, like Looney has the double stun. There's no way for him to know which player is which, but he kills the one that isn't on the five spree. So you talk about that game number two, how it was a blowout for Splice. The biggest reason was the snowball. It, it yeah. was Looney that was making big plays. He got the score streaks, and they executed very, very well with them. And then they get that 6-3 win. Well, right now it's the flip side. It's Riss that's having a fantastic game and is trying to earn these score streaks and trying to one-up Looney in the series if he can maybe bait out his teammate and sometimes being that teammate is not the best job but if it rewards him with a lightning strike it could be crucial of course bit of a different map than arsenal with score streaks Being a little bit more dominant there Wayless finds one wise to back down and look at the player pushing forward it's breezy he finds another Zeke so gets one and that trade goes down i'm loving the place the denial of playing with here just uh, the wolf packing the, the sense of no hesitation at all. Puts themselves again in a 2v1. Risk is still alive. Not going to find the streak. Can he find the one? Not going to find the second. So, did Nile come out on top? I think only the lightning strike was obtained there. But it's 3-0. And Splice, a little bit lost here. Absolutely. That was nearly massive plays coming out from Temp at the end. But you talk about a round that just heavily went in favor of Denial. I mean, who was it? Whalers up here that gets the first blood for free. And, and granted, eventually he gets traded, but it's accuracy that traded who gets double challenged. And that is a, a very nice round win coming from them. Now they get the lightning strike as well, which granted lightning strike on payload, not as impactful as some of the other maps, but it's certainly still nice to have, if not just for the ping to give you the information. So a very favorable spot right now for Denial to be in. 
of course, we've seen Spice make comes back before. They cannot take their foot off the pedal. Just seems like a different Splice these last three maps. I could just find one. Risk finds his seventh kill of the game here. Concussion does find Jurd in a big daze there. Trophy system has been put down. And Aqua is going to be challenged from, I think, two, maybe three places. But he's going to be the leader. Jurd's going to get flown in on. He's taken out 4v2. Denial are running through Splice right now. Still have the ping off the lightning, I believe. Sniper in the hands of Looney doesn't connect. It's still not going to do anything there. Temp off screen does find one. And it's going to be down to that man to find three kills here. And normally you'd see their player just kind of slide on off the map sometimes. But this position is kind of tough to do. Trying to find one or something. Yeah, it's just a denial wolf pack running together. I, I mean, even a kill on Looney, double challenge, the kill on Jerk, like a triple or quadruple <laughs> challenge. And well, now you got all of denial running around. Temp's trying to find a kill if he can, but now they're going to spot him out. Rezzy gets away with the bomb, and the first gunfight doesn't even go his way. 4 0 lead right now for denial, and they are looking good while doing it. They certainly are. Round after round. They're coming out on top here, and it, it, it seems like everyone knows what a bait and switch is in a trade, but when the trades go down, Denial, like, almost trade the trade. They, they slide in on that person who drops and, again, gets two kills instead of one. They sacrifice one and gain two, two to three. They're always at this number advantage here, and honestly, it, it's refreshing to see because Denial have had some very, very poor performances in Search and Destroy. This, on the other hand, though, is uh, most certainly as far as say their best so far. It is only uh, four rounds in, but can place bounce back. Tempt does find the first. Accuracy dances with the devil and will find himself getting taken out 4v4. I know the narrative right now is just denial doing amazing, but I will say Tempt again with the cluster nades. Good God, he has been on point with those. 4v3 though for Denial, the sun's gonna help out Luna to even things up and he's gonna find a Maddox to help him out with. Aqua picks up a kill and finally, it looks like Spice should be good to get on the board. Brezzy by himself is just gonna sprint as fast as he can away. Or maybe he does wanna see if he can find an errant kill. But I think it's probably best just to take a tumble. Actually, maybe he wants the grab slam. I think that's what it was. He wants the grab slam, but what he is doing is... Oh, he's on a 5 speed. Never mind, I'm an idiot. He's 60 points away from streaks. That is exactly what I was about to say, Chance. I was definitely not about to say he wants the Graf Slam. Uh, I was going to say he's 60 points away from streaks and doesn't want to die, but he's going to survive this one uh, as we go into our sixth round. Splice finally got on the board, and they will know, of course, he is on streaks as well. I'm glad you... Yeah, uh, good God. I'm, I'm sitting here watching one. Risk like go off, start 6-0. I'm thinking about the lightning strike for him, and I see 5-2, and two, and I'm like, eh. Oh, it turns out he's on a 5 spree, 60 points away. I'm at, it's tough for me to keep up with this kind of information, and I have everything in glowing lights on the screen. Imagine how difficult it is for some of these pro teams oh. to keep up with all the specialists, all the streaks, the kill streaks, someone on. That's obviously why they are playing and while I'm casting. Uh, plus, we have like a 140 inch monitor in front of us, which. It's such a big screen. It helps by all means. The size of those cards are like a big <laughs> mobile phone, if you like. But anyway, back into the. <laughs> Back into the game. Round six. Denial still with the lead here, but Splice do find one. Looney opens up with one. Oh, my. Jesus. What? What was that? Trying to earn some streaks. You're going to take down your teammate to at least get one. I I mean, maybe that, that's a trade of some sort. I don't know if that's a good one. Not one I'd want to make. And he's looking for more. He is just inches away from another player. Of course, all this is going down. It's an advantage for Splice again because Looney, still with that sniper, is able to find a pick. 4v3, 45 seconds left on the clock here. This is where the lightning will be pinged. Will it be used? It will be. He's looking to maybe push some players inside. He's going to find accuracy. And now the pressure goes on to Aqua. He doesn't even need it. Aqua falls a 3v2 now in favor of Denial. You'd like to think the bomb goes down. Looney has been so good with this sniper. But is he in the right position to do so? Jurd finds the first. Oh, the bomb goes down. Now the fight comes in. Looney and Jurd make this around where they should and they will win splice they take out that lightning strike and now it uh looks like looney should uh, be able to defuse this just when uh, jude gets a little bit closer 
to his specialist. But kind of touching on that, the positioning from Looney and Jerd there was perfect. I mean, yes, to hit that snipe from Looney, it's, it's hard to do, but he hits it. They were under pressure by the, the offense of denial, but they come out on top of a much needed round. Yeah, Looney is doing everything he can to be the savior of Ooh. this fly squad right now. Picking up some pretty impressive shots, making some nice clutches, and it is worth pointing out, instead of Looney going for the streaks, it looked like Spice is going to value uh, having the specialist just a little bit more. And you can just get a look at some of the shots you can hit. Not easy at all, especially not with the player jumping. And then, of course, another stun coming out to just make Zeke the free kill towards the end. That, of course, if you remember, that is a, a lightning strike that did get invested for the side of denial. So Splice obviously not out of this yet. Most certainly not. Round number seven is amongst us. Another 90 seconds on the clock. And I hate to be the one to say it, but I just have this odd feeling that this game could be going a little longer than I expected here. Attack 5 boost has been popped. Again, this is a round where if Lumi strikes first, which he doesn't. Aqua does trade one out, though. Whistles past the feet of Natshe. A lot of ICR gunfire going down. Nothing connecting just yet. Trying to find something on the higher side of the map, but still Tech 5 boost available for Splice. And Splice is just waiting for an opening. Finally, Jared is going to be going for this bomb plant, but it's not easy. Actually, instead of the bomb plant, he's going for the kill. He wants to get clearance, but he's going to fall. And now it's up to accuracy to try to make plays with the ICR, but that means he's just going to get traded out. Temp is able to find one as well. 27 seconds. They do have this bomb, but they're getting shot in the back. Temp, though, able to find one. Looney, all of a sudden, last one standing, and Whalers finds two to take them down. You saw the stun to try to help Jerd make the play. But Denial, who were dancing around the gunfire and the snipers, coming out from Splice, able to hold on. It's a nail-biter of an SMD round, but then it just comes down to Whalers making the big play in the end. And this is now Denial hunting for their first series win in the Pro League. For some of these players, the first series in the Pro League, they will have one in their careers. And they've got a few chances at it. Not that they'll want to obviously start throwing rounds away, but five to two with a lightning strike, with a war machine. They're obviously faced up against a war machine of temp. Sniper in the hands of Looney. He's already been so, so good with this. Chris has pulled in that lightning strike. I think he used the ping previously, but he's going to find accuracy. Temp invested the war machine. Wouldn't be surprised to see the war machine of Risk come out shortly. Four v four. Comes the war machine. You hear it whistling past these players. No one wanting to make a move. Look at the mini map there. All four players for denial have backed off, taken the very outskirts of the map here. That war machine now gone from temp. For all said and done, 30 seconds left on the clock for denial. They have to make something happen. It's Riz trying to be the playmaker. Zeke, though, he gets caught pre-aiming. You do have a player, though, behind enemy lines. It's going to be Risk, but he's just trying to look for players. You're going to have a free kill on Aqua. Now, Temp is actually trapped in between, but the time is ticking down. The Niles do not have the man advantage. Temp is able to find another kill with the cluster and the beat down to finish it off. Splice is able to hold on for at least one round longer. And once again, they do it, and they burn the lightning strike from the opposition. And again, touching on what you said before, you know, Temp kind of opened up this, this deadlock here with that kill. Uh, but finding another with the cluster... You know, he, he's just been on point of, with it. And obviously you see it off screen there, but incredible stuff from Temp to keep them in it. Another round to go here. Five to three now. Of course, match bonus for all these players, you know. Stuff is on the line and are looking for the first victory, of course. Temp is now available for Natshe. Jerd's close to that grav slam. These players up top of the Maddox just spotting information, and that's exactly what they get. They know the pressure's coming. Looney able to win the first gunfight, and that's a big one for him to get. Risk feels the pressure, has to use the War Machine to keep players away, and actually they're going to have the Tempest as well. 
Good luck getting past the specialist, Jared. He's just going to get destroyed in denial for the 4v2, make it 4v1. Looking for their first series win, and they just got to kill Temp, and they get it. Denial on the board. Splice fall to the Spanish yesterday, and today the French. Denial come out with a first victory here in the CWL Pro League 2019. And Denial, they needed to hit form soon with only a couple weeks away from Fort Worth. This is what they wanted, what a lot of the community back in France wanted as well. But congratulations to Denial Splice. Again, they took those first two maps pretty convincingly. Uh, the hard point actually was pretty close. Those last three, though, very interesting story. And like this, like for Denial, I wanted them to get confidence builders, like play Spice close, maybe, you know, take them even to map number four, get one win in, and then you can feel better and yeah. try to get that series win tomorrow. But now they get it here. They could end this week like two and four in the Pro League. Then you go into Fort Worth. And if you're taking scalps like Splice, again, the confidence that they have to be feeling right now, it is going to be a massive help to them. I think as well, you know, off that series, you know, they started super slow. They lost the hard point, which was close. You know, if that went in a, a different way or they weren't playing Splice, for example, you know, they can start to build from this. I think they've got a lot of, obviously, VODs to watch back and see what the, the good and the bad is. However, congratulations to Denial. I believe Jess is on the floor with Whalers for our PlayStation Instant Reaction. Thanks, Momo. How does it feel to take your first win here at the Pro League? To be honest, it's feeling really good. So it was hard to get the first win, but we get it. So now I hope we're going to bounce back and get more win. Why did it take you so long to warm up here at the league? I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know. Fair enough. Finally, do you have anything you'd like to say to your fans and supporters back home in France? Uh, we're just not going to give up and give our best at every match. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been your PlayStation Instant Reaction. We'll be right back after this quick break.
discovered Splice's Achilles heel, and that is European teams because they have just taken their second loss in a row. First Heretics and now Denial. Your desk is back. Chance, Pack, Study. I, Chance, I need I need to know. How, how does Denial, that was 0-5, performing poorly, turn around and then beat Splice? That's a great question. I, it's tough to say. Like, I think definitely they've shown, like, improvements. I think that's almost inarguable. And maybe Spice isn't quite as good now as what that we saw from at Vegas. Keep in mind, it's been, like, months since we've seen this team play. So I don't know if we're necessarily seeing Spice at their absolute best. Almost certainly not. And then that might be Denial at their very best. So it's a combination of a lot of factors. Now getting more experience. Maybe Spice again just getting caught off guard by some of these teams. It's tough to say, but either way, they look fantastic while doing it. Now Splice really does need to go back to the drawing board. It's really weird to say because when we started this week, we were saying that Splice was easily the best team in this division. Yeah. We were. Yeah. I don't know what that was. They had looked like a shadow of themselves after game two. They got blown out in the control, beat to death. Out. In the, yeah, no, and that last SD wasn't that close either. I don't know. D good job to denial. <laughs> I mean, we weren't <laughs> expecting that. I don't think anyone I was, was expecting, not them expecting to win. that. Of course okay. not. Who was? There's no way anyone went into that series thinking that I was going to pull that out just because right. simply Spice was one of the better teams here. But that performance from that team, okay, I want to apologize for whatever. You guys are actually a good team after that series because I don't know if it was a role change between you guys. I'm pretty sure Natche was running a Maddox as well. That definitely had to have helped in the slaying department because they were all pretty much consistent after the second map. Just keeping up with the pace and just knowing what they needed to do in a situation. Right. That team can actually compete in this pro league, and I'm hoping that we get to see them more often. And, I mean, that's certainly true. We're going to pull up game five now, but we said we'd give them till the end of the week to improve, and they, they heard us clearly because they improved. Listen, when I said that you have to drop their entire roster, there's reasons behind that. It's not just like I'm some sort of evil dictator where you have to get rid of their roster, okay? If you're picking up French players, you I mean, you have to pick up from, like, such a small pool of French players. You yeah. can't, they can't even pick up other mainland England players. They can't, they can't pick, pick up, Americans like, Dylan. Either. Yeah, they can't pick up any Americans. When you, if you're going to make a change, you have to change out the entire thing. Because communication just... Yeah, yeah the language speak. barrier would make able, that so hard. Able to speak. I can only imagine some of, like, the top M's, like, studying up on the French, trying to, like, get as good as possible. <laughs> you got, like, Pharaoh cracking open Rosetta Stone, doing what he can. Like, pick me up, guys, please. But they don't need it. Uh, apparently, again, look great. Even like that first map, they had the lead the entire time. Had like a 50 point lead. They got broken over by like Lamborghini Hill. Like this could have been a 3-1. This could have been a 3-1 where they dominated everything but the search. And then that search, the first one at least, only went the way it did because Looney had a god tier performance. Chance, do you think this is a blip of greatness since they were 0-5? Or do you think like we're gonna we're gonna start to see more out of them going forward? I know it's hard to predict something like that, but I mean I, I never thought they were that bad to begin with. I, I think you look at their record 0-5 or whatever it was, and that's just you assume it's bad, but they've had a ton of close maps, like the first one that we saw, where they look good the entire time, and then all of a sudden one team like flips a switch and then just kind of like runs them over. But that like comes down to inexperience. Like how many of these teams, when it starts getting tough, when you're getting killed by guys in the kill feed that you don't have like championships on the roster, right. you start to get stressed out and it's tough to deal with the pressure. And again, for four of the guys on this team, most pressure they've ever had to deal with, bar none. The most competition they've ever had to face, bar none. So it's just a learning curve. It's just a process for these guys. And I don't know what their peak is because still, I mean, one in five, whatever it is, isn't great going into Fort Worth. Like, if they Better end up than placing, like, five. top 16, like, that, it still wouldn't be too surprising. So yeah. it's a great win to get under your belt. But by no means does that mean they're, like, a top team now. Like, that's just, that would be insane. For Denial, especially in this s &D, it was completely different from the first five matches. They were actually staying together and running around, fighting gunfights with each other. And you can just tell. They were just, every single gunfight there was just so easy for them. Even right here, we have a player, he was just sitting in his corner, but at the same time, there's a player on the back steps that's just watching over him. That was just something that we weren't seeing out of Denial, the teamwork, and it was just good to see out of them. Yeah, and what was the round where we saw, like, from three different Splice players' perspective, like, Jared was inside tunnels. You had, like, three, three players for now sliding at it, then the next time. one's Looney. He's getting double challenges, accuracy double challenges. Like, it obviously helps when things are going your way and you're getting first bloods and whatnot. But yeah, I, I think they executed most things pretty well, even on the map losses they had. Like you talk about that Arsenal search and destroy it. I don't think they really did much wrong. Yeah. It's just Looney picking up two Streaks. pieces. Sniper gets a lightning strike, gets yep. a hellstorm. storm. Like they were just dealt a very difficult hand on that map. Well, we've talked again, we've we've talked a lot about denial and and again on Splice's side, I mean, they looked so strong, but now they've lost to both European teams. That's two in a row. I mean, going going into matches tomorrow, Pac, what are you expecting from them? 
I mean, I still expect them to win. I'm not really sure what changed over the course of this series for them. They just, it looked like they fell apart as a team or maybe Denial just played that good so it made it look like Spice was just off. I'm not really sure, but they need to figure it out before tomorrow for sure. I, like that was shocking to me, that turnaround in that series from Denial. I mean, and you, I mean, you certainly don't want to be ending Splice uh, oh, losing three in a row. Still. Oh, yeah, 100%. Especially if you were supposed to, you played Heretics really, really close yesterday. That series, you start up 2 0, you lose it. And then tomorrow, I don't know how they're going to be feeling going into this next series. If you want to make a positive spin, though, you could say this is a blessing in disguise. Like, it's better that Splice loses now than at Fort Worth. It's better than them if they go to play like a top eight match against Heretics, where at the time, like a week or so ago, you thought, okay, Splice is going to get this. For them to realize, oh God, we actually have holes in our gameplay. So if you want to take the positive side, you say for Splice, you get beat a couple times. Now you know you got a week and a half, whatever it is, to fix everything you can so you have a better performance at Fort Worth. Because if they get top three again, then like still a fantastic team. Yep. All right, Pac, we brought this up yesterday.